we get to crush on our queens and get to do everything woman and this week's uh, episode of Strength of a Woman, we bring one guest, but today we are graced to have two phenomenal women. One is Jane Gasheru, who is the lead psychologist and facilitator at Clarity Counseling and Training Center. The other one is Violet Angina, counselor and marketer at Clarity Counseling and Training Center. You can imagine from the title and you know from hearing just about their who they are, it's bound to be a great morning. Karibuni sana. Asante sana. Thank you for making time. Mm -hmm. It means a lot. So probably, because um, I have already uh, introduced you, you can probably tell us your name. Mm -hmm. And yeah. My name is Violet Ngena. Mm -hmm. And uh, just as you've said, I am a counselor and a marketer at Clarity Training mm -hmm. and Counseling Center. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'm Jean Gashero. I'm um, happy to be here. I'm the lead counselor and facilitator at uh, Clarity Counseling and Training Center. So what do you do in Clarity? Mm -hmm. um, so you want us to talk about what we do at Clarity as yes. a whole? Yes. Um, so Clarity Counseling and Training Center is um, one, a counseling center. So that means that we see people for uh, counseling. We, do ther we offer therapy services. So we do individual counseling, we do couple counseling, we do um, group counseling, we see families as well. Uh, and then also we are a training center in the sense that we do corporate training. Uh, we offer training even to individuals as well. Um, so that's basically what our work entails. And we also do co um, consultancy uh, for corporates. Wow, it's good to see both of you come together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's interesting. You know, what I will say is that, you know, in our society today, mm -hmm. we have so many people who have got issues and they don't know how to deal with the issues. They don't know mm -hmm. who to turn to. Yeah. Sometimes you find that um, as a woman, you, you, you get confused because you're supposed to answer in as a wife, as a mm -hmm. mother. You're supposed to be working. And sometimes you find somebody does not understand who they are. They, they're just there, you know, waking up every day in the morning to do the normal things. But yeah. at the end of the day, you'll find this person needs someone to talk to, yeah. someone to share what they're going through in mm. life. Mm. So unless they are given this opportunity to speak out what they are feeling, it could be in marriage, could be at the place of work, you know, you find someone getting up uh, or ending up depressed. That is why we are there, to give them hope and strength and uh, to make them understand that life is good. So why is counseling important? You know, sometimes we're always thinking that, mm -hmm. do I need to see a counselor? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll get through it. You know, sometimes we go through things and we're like, ah, I don't need to see a counselor, I'll get through it. So probably you mm -hmm. can tell us, why is mm -hmm. it important to have counseling? Mm, counseling is very important because uh, at the end of everything, you know, um, number one, it helps us to function very well as individuals. And uh, you will notice that there is actually a connection even between uh, what people call normal illnesses uh, to psychological issues. I feel like a person's overall health always starts with their psychological and emotional stability. So where there is no mental health, where there is no mental stability, then that means that the person is compromised as a whole. It means that your work is affected. It means that if you're married, your marriage is affected. It means that your relationships do not function well. And that is where counseling actually comes in mm -hmm. to help people understand what is really happening um, to an extent that they find themselves uh, struggling the way that they struggle. Uh, whether it's uh, struggling to parent, uh, mm -hmm. struggling to date, uh, struggling in a marriage, um, whether it is struggling even to adjust to work or to even have relationships with your family members as well. Um, so I would say that the importance of counseling has, or rather counseling has been undermined. Um, and its purposes are more than people actually understand. Mm -hmm. mm. You have something you want to Yeah, add? you know, in short, we'll say that, uh, you know, counseling is important because it helps to increase the cap uh, capability of an individual to, to know how to navigate through previously challenging situations mm. and environment. That is why we are there. 
So um, there's this notion that mm -hmm. if you're going to a counselor, mm -hmm. it's because you have a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, when you tell someone I'm attending therapy, someone will mm -hmm. look at you and they're yeah. like, mm. are you depressed? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, um, how can you, how, what can you say about that? I don't know if I should call it a myth. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I should call it a rumor. Mm -hmm. But there's that uh, notion, actually, mm -hmm. let me call it notion, that mm -hmm. if today I was to tell a friend that I'm seeing a counselor, mm -hmm. they would be like, true. Mm -hmm. Uko. So is, what would you say about that notion? To me, I would say that's a myth. Mm -hmm. Because you see, if you're going for counseling, could mm -hmm. be for emotional, uh, you know, intelligence mm -hmm. or personal development. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time you find people um, who don't understand who they are. You'll find that uh, you, you're working, you have a good job, you got uh, a good salary. Mm -hmm. But if somebody asks you who you really are, you cannot explain. So you find somebody thinks that they are comfortable in life. But if you get close to them and talk to them, they have inner problems that are disturbing. So it's not just about when somebody is going through stress, mm -hmm. but you could want to develop yourself. Even at your place of work, could be relating with your co-workers. You'll find there is someone who just has a problem talking to colleagues or even socializing. So personal development and uh, the, the many courses that we are offering is not to the sick. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Yeah. You know, now that you mentioned that uh, when you go for counseling, people think that you have mm. problems. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't have problems, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> True. True, sorry. And, you know, um, f interestingly, mm -hmm. if you look around, mm -hmm. um, as Violet is saying, mm -hmm. there are a lot of people with problems that they don't call problems. True. What am I talking about? I had you and um, I had you and, and, and Val talk about you know uh, what is it called? Uh, in, in a, what what is it called? The school of what? Character development. The school of character development. How many people in this town uh -huh. have gone through that? You know, yeah. uh, you talk to a lot of people who are dating, mm -hmm. even the people who are married, True. and they have a story. And you see behind that story mm. is a pattern. You mm. find that this person has probably had the same relationship, the same nature, I mean the same kind of relationship with different people. Mm -hmm. So who's the common denominator? Yeah. If you have had, if your relationship mm -hmm. or your relationships always turn out the same, who's the common denominator? Mm -hmm. you. Yourself. You. So what does that <laughs> tell you about yourself? Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> there is probably something you yeah. need to heal. Yeah. Um, for as long as you are raised in a family, born by a human being, mm. then you are likely to have one kind of dysfunction mm. or the other. Mm -hmm. Maybe in how you relate with people. Maybe in how you handle your emotions. Maybe in terms of how you reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And therefore, counseling is actually for everybody. Because when you look at how people behave, you know, there are people who are bleeding all over other mm -hmm. people, even mm -hmm. at work. Mm -hmm. You know, very bitter, very angry individuals. Yeah. They don't want to uh, be told anything. Um, they don't want to be given feedback, and especially when it's negative mm -hmm. feedback. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is it that they jump like that and, and they personalize what they are told? Because lack of emotional intelligence. Mm. Maybe while they were being brought up, mm -hmm. uh, they, they were never taught the right or healthy mm -hmm. communication mm -hmm. styles to use. Mm -hmm. And so, I, I really, counseling is, is for everyone. Everyone mm -hmm. has something to deal with, something to correct, something to develop about themselves. That is true. Mm. If I can give an example, mm -hmm. uh, lately we saw um, a lady who committed suicide, you know, it was all over social media. If you'd have looked at her lifestyle, you would think that everything is okay. Mm. But yeah. deep down inside, there was something that was burning. And yet, what she lacked is just... Uh, uh, someone to talk to and understanding of who she really is because if she really knew who she was she wouldn't really have gone to that extreme mm -hmm. you know once a woman uh, takes charge of her life you understand that life revolves around you as long as you've given yourself happiness then you'll be able <coughs> to tackle every other problem that comes mm -hmm. your way so in our society right now we have a problem because you don't know who to turn to because yeah. you're thinking if I go to a counselor, people will say that maybe I'm mentally he he ill mm. or maybe mm. you're suffering from something, yeah. yet it is not true. So you see, as clarity, we go out there, not just talking to women, even men.
because men also have issues. Mm -hmm. We talk to children, we talk to schools, we talk to the teachers, we talk to leaders in school and help them to know how to tackle issues and live happily because problems will always be there with us. Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. at the point where we are at right now mm -hmm. in, in um, as Africans, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times counseling was done as a, as a westernized thing. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like in Africa it's becoming um, an, something that is becoming embraced or mm -hmm. something, if mm -hmm. you can say that? Mm -hmm. It's definitely picking up. And I think we have COVID-19 to thank for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in the sense that a lot of people have realized that in the absence of work, in the absence of something that keeps them busy. Because we are living in a world where people are obsessed with work. You know, we wake up, we go and spend our whole day at work. Mm -hmm. Come back at night, in short, you have no time to think. You have yeah. no time to get in touch with yourself. You have no time to get in touch with what is happening in your life. Mm -hmm. So in the absence of that busyness, people now came to realize that when I have to deal with myself, it's actually difficult mm -hmm. to deal with myself. Mm -hmm. When I'm left to deal with my marriage or my partner, it's actually difficult to do so. When I'm left to deal with my family, my children, it's difficult to do so. And mm -hmm. so uh, people are starting to now embrace counseling and see it as a way out in terms of understanding themselves and understanding exactly what is going on in their lives mm -hmm. and also being able to correct that and being able to adjust and live a more healthy life. Mm -hmm. mm. So, um, um, Touching on COVID-19 and mm -hmm. uh, what you uh, have been sharing about. Mm -hmm. um, when COVID came, mm -hmm. we moved a lot of sessions online. Mm -hmm. How has that affected the quality or, you know, mm -hmm. um, the quality of the sessions that are being given? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, what's, what's the approach? Are you planning to move to physical sessions more? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, that mm -hmm. point kusema. Online has what? So to <laughs> to <the> online. <laughs> you know, the good thing about uh, the online services, like for clarity, we already had online services going on. So that uh, if an individual is busy, maybe you're working and uh, your time or your uh, working hours don't allow you to go for the physical counseling, we already had the, the online. So it was an advantage to us because now, mm -hmm. uh, despite the fact that uh, COVID-19 affected many people, uh, for us, we already had the services going on. So mm -hmm. we are both online and also physically we're still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, actually, the quality of sessions doesn't change whether it is online mm -hmm. or physical because um, therapy is about a relationship mm -hmm. and that relationship can be mm -hmm. created whether um, one is being seen online or in person. Mm -hmm. um, what I would say has been the advantage in terms of, um, you know, having to use online services is that now, you know, we are able to see people even who are outside Kenya. Mm -hmm. Kenyans in the diaspora can now access counseling services, mm -hmm. you know, at a fairer fair rate, so mm -hmm. to speak, because in those countries, I understand that therapy is quite expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time also, I think it has also given people, it has opened up people's minds to the fact that, as Violet is saying, mm -hmm. I don't don't have to struggle to come for a physical or one-on-one -on -one session mm -hmm. maybe after work or even between lunch hour mm -hmm. I could as well do it later on maybe at home in the comfort of my house mm -hmm. and I don't have to now think about traveling at night mm -hmm. so in regards to that nothing we haven't really changed much what we do is that we give uh, our clients an option mm -hmm. whether you want to be seen in person or mm -hmm. you want to be seen virtually it, it's all up to you uh, because we understand that it's the same thing that we are actually offering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let me take this a bit, um, a notch higher. Mm -hmm. Recently you did um, an awareness campaign. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I should call it campaign mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. but you did a self-awareness uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. Do you mind talking about it, like everything you can tell us about it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so self-awareness, um, uh, first of all, is all about knowing who you are, answering the question of who you are, mm -hmm. knowing what drives you, and then also beginning to understand yourself in terms of how you think, mm -hmm. um, your emotional uh, patterns or your emotional reactions, and your behavior. Because these three aspects of self, your thoughts, your behavior, and your emotions, they are very, they are interrelated. Mm -hmm. And then understanding why 
uh, you function the way you do. Understanding why you find yourself in certain situations, mm -hmm. that's what self-awareness is about. Personal development comes as a result of self-awareness because then with self-awareness, <coughs> you understand what needs to change about you. You understand what needs uh, to be worked on. And so this self-awareness program that we have going on is about helping people to explore themselves and to understand what am I really all about? Um, let me latch on to what Violet, uh, mm -hmm. Violet mentioned. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, this lady sh that she, she, was, she was quoting, this video that we all saw on social media. Um, a lot of people, unfortunately, are in that situation. Where does self-awareness come in? In the sense that understanding that, okay, uh, probably my marriage doesn't make me happy or mm -hmm. there's something that's happening in my marriage that is not working for me. However, my happiness is not dependent on the other person. Mm -hmm. And so what do I do as a person? I realize what is bringing me to that place of getting depressed mm -hmm. because this a marriage involves another person. They might change, they might not change. However, my dependence on them to change is dangerous for me mm -hmm. because then it means that I'm pegging my mental health on this person changing. Mm -hmm. And so when I realize myself that maybe one of the reasons why I am getting depressed is because I have told myself that without this marriage, I am nothing. That's a thought process I need to correct. You see where mm -hmm. self-awareness mm -hmm. comes in? That's a thought process that I need to correct. If I have told myself that I can only be okay we call that absolutist thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can only be okay when this person starts behaving like this. You see, mm -hmm. I'm placing a demand on that person. And uh, at the end of the day, I don't have control over their behavior. Yeah. I can't control whether or not they actually do what I want them to do. And so when now, this is how self-awareness helps you. You start to see, ah, this demand that I'm placing on this person is unrealistic. And so as a result, for me to be okay, what I need to do is change this demand have realistic expectations of this person that you know what, regardless of what you're doing or not doing, I can still be okay because as Jane, I have a responsibility over my own emotions, over my own thoughts, mm -hmm. over my own behavior. And so basically that's what self-awareness is all about, seeing yourself for who you are, mm -hmm. understanding what exactly is the problem in as far as I'm concerned, and then how do I now work to change these circumstances mm -hmm. so that I can be better in mm -hmm. terms of uh, my mental health, and not just mental health really, because mental health affects your entire life. I can function better whether it's at work mm -hmm. or it's uh, in the relationships that I have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true, because now you see like um, if you as an individual will not accept the things that are around you or your environment, that, that is what leads to getting depressed <coughs> or stressed out. You know, like uh, if you look at the society today, we have the youths talking about uh, if it's in a relationship and uh, maybe your spouse has told you that they don't want you, say, ukiacho achika. You know, that is just a way of fighting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just want to show people that you're... <laughs> Exactly. So, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you say, to you, ah, mm -hmm. you know, that's mm -hmm. not a solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, that is where we talk about the character development, self awareness, mm -hmm. understanding who you are, so that you're able to make uh, the right decisions. Mm -hmm. Not decisions out of desperation or decisions because you want to please your friends and the surrounding, but you understand yourself fully and you know who you are. Mm. What's the significance of, um, of you know, mm -hmm. doing self-awareness? Because I'm assuming mm -hmm. that's uh, from the explanation mm -hmm. uh, and the in-depth knowledge you've given about self-awareness mm -hmm. is that it's not just for specific people. Everyone can Everyone. go for, for mm -hmm. self-awareness mm -hmm. course. So what's really the significance of it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the benefit of self-awareness uh, is that you, it's like taking a torch and then lighting it um, into an area that was previously dark. What I'm referring to as the dark area is self. You know, it's like uh, illuminating your life for you to see what has been hiding maybe in places that you have not seen that needs to be swept out, that mm -hmm. needs to be cleaned out. It is understanding that this is what uh, pushes me or places me in a difficult situation mm -hmm. so that I'm able to get out. So the importance of that, first of all, is for people to be able to, to one, uh, clear their minds, like get, gain clarity 
in terms of this is actually what my life is about. This is what has been causing me problems. Number two is uh, to improve how people function. Let me give an example of stress. Mm -hmm. um, we don't get our vulnerability to stress is very different. Some people have a higher vulnerability than other people. Mm -hmm. There are factors within the person that create that higher vulnerability. And so my understanding of the factors within me, what is it about me that makes me vulnerable to stress, now gives me the pointers mm -hmm. in terms of what I need to work on. And that's why I'm talking about improving uh, functionality, mm -hmm. even improving relationships. Mm -hmm. Again, some people's blind spots, everyone has blind spots. Yeah. What we, what we call blind spots is those things about yourself that you don't know. I don't know whether, Grace, there are some things that people have told you about yourself and you're like, no, nah. <laughs> that's not <laughs> me. <laughs> you <I don't> <laughs> you just want to criticize me. Like, no, uh -huh. even sometimes you could be rude mm. to your friends. Mm. And when uh, your friend tells you that you, by the way, Grace, do you know you're very rude? And mm. you're like me? Rude? Mm. You know, rude. Mm. How? You just start hating that person for mm. telling you the mm. truth. Mm. And yet it's a character in you that you need to develop mm. and change for the best. Mm -hmm. That is why we have the, uh, the conflict resolution. Mm. How do you handle problems when they come? Mm. If someone tells you you are rude, do you just accept? accept it positively mm -hmm. and move on or do you carry it with you? Mm -hmm. And you're like, I mimi u dem staungia. I Staungia na etena. Chua tuende atuele wane. You see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you realize, you look around you and you realize, actually, the interesting bit is, ab is that mm -hmm. most people, when they come for counseling, over 80, 85% of the issues that bring, people bring to counseling mm -hmm. are relationship based or relationship mm -hmm. oriented. Why? Because we have a lot of dysfunctional relationships around mm -hmm. us in our society. Mm -hmm. Relationships we have with parents, with our siblings, the relationships we have with our friends. And mm -hmm. so self-awareness now helps you to understand mm -hmm. as grace, who am I in these relationships? Mm -hmm. who, how do I show up? Mm -hmm. What do people see? So that now you begin to understand, for example, some people might come to realize that, ah, Kumbe, my relationships haven't work, have been working because mm -hmm. maybe I'm the quiet type and I like to assume that people know how they should treat me. Mm -hmm. And I never give people feedback. I never tell them when I'm not happy with what they do. And so in that sense, then, I all, I'm always finding myself a victim of circumstances. Mm -hmm. But then when I'm able to now, when I gain this self-awareness and I see myself, mm -hmm. then it, it means that it's something that I can actually correct. And just to support your idea uh, mm -hmm. or what you said about uh, self-awareness being important to everyone, um, you, you see, when even we go to schools and we are talking to the children, when you listen to them, the problems revolve around their parents. So it is relationship again that is bringing a problem. A child will not just start misbehaving in school out of nothing. Either something happened in school or something happened at home. So relationship is the key to everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and also, you, uh, when you look around, you realize that really a lot of people are lost. Mm -hmm. Most people are living other people's lives. Mm. Um, uh, why are we living other people's lives? Because we don't know ourselves in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you find that when faced with the question of who we are, most people get terrified. Why are you terrified? Because you are searching within yourself and suddenly you realize, I have nothing to say. Yeah. And so self-awareness now helps us to define ourselves and then because as a result of that to even be able to behave more consistently. I don't know whether you have noticed that most people are different people in different situations. Yeah. If mm. I may ask a question, mm -hmm. like uh, if you look at our society today, uh, what do people study in life and what do they do? Mm. You'll ask someone, Uli Somea Nini? Well, mm. the degree and the background. Uh, you know, mm. things are different completely. Like if I can give an example of myself, mm. I did um, um, education. I was a teacher for 20 years. Then after 20 years, I realized that actually teaching is not my thing. Mm. I don't want to teach. So I went into preaching. Mm. I preached the gospel for a, t for a long time. Then I, I also came to understand that, hey, mm. uko inje, watu wanaitaji kuambiwa vile kunaenda, you know. Uh, so you find everyone in the society, you, you know, in a helter skelter manner, looking mm. for solutions, and mm. you don't know who to turn to. Until when I did mm. uh, psychology myself, that's when I realized that Allah, so you need to understand who you are, first of all, mm. before you start talking about your friend. You know, just like even in the Bible said, before you remove something in your friend's eye, mm. so you'll always see yourself as 
the queen, the princess, but the other mm. one, makosa mm. niyaki. <laughs> <laughs> so we have people mm -hmm. who are not able to afford whether it's the self-awareness mm -hmm. or the counseling therapy sessions. Mm -hmm. what, what's their option? Mm -hmm. What will they do? Mm -hmm. Um, for people who cannot afford uh, therapy, and I want to come back to that and, and talk about that word afford, mm -hmm. because I think it's a perce perception that people have that is not quite right. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are people who truly cannot afford, probably because they are not working or something of that sort. Um, then there's, there's usually the option of self-help books. There's usually the option of listening to uh, maybe psychologists, maybe who are on YouTube and, and getting to you know pick up a few things here mm -hmm. and there. But, and nowadays, there are counselors actually even in public mm -hmm. hospitals. Mm -hmm. But I think there is also um, a perception that people have of counseling that makes them think they cannot afford. Yeah. Let me ask you, Grace, for example, uh, when you go to a doctor, how much do you mm -hmm. pay in terms of consultation? 3,000, 5,000? Yeah. Uh -huh. 3,000 to 5,000, right? Yeah. And then he's going to give you medication yes. from the very same visit. Mm. Eh? So you might end up spending maybe not less than 10000 Yes. Now, therapy sessions range, one therapy session in Kenya, in, in, uh, let me talk about Nairobi, you probably find a range, the normal range is between two to 3000 per session, per session. right? Okay. Uh, for people who are not like, you know, um, yeah, the, let me call it the normal range. So if you are to use that same 10000 that you have used at the doctors mm. for one visit, how many sessions does it take you for? Wow, quite a number. Quite a number. Around five, mm. minimum three. Mm. And yet, this might just be the sessions that you need for you to stop taking, for you to, to prevent or to stop, to prevent you from getting that BP that is taking you to the doctors in the first place. This is the, the sessions that you might need mm -hmm. to now help you to not get depressed yeah. in the first place so that you will need to take that medication for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm talking about that word afford mm -hmm. as it's a matter of perception in the sense that because people don't really understand what counseling can do for them, yeah. then they don't prioritize it and they would rather pay for something that is much, actually much more expensive than that can be mm -hmm. prevented. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what... what um, what informs the number of sessions mm -hmm. one can do? Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, one, it is usually dependent on what you are, like what has mm -hmm. brought you there in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also the individual, uh, because we are all different. Yeah. There are some people who will probably just need three sessions and they are good to go. Some people might need ten. Mm -hmm. So it's dependent on the nature of the issues that you're bringing for help and also who you are, how you function as a person. Some mm -hmm. people are able to catch on quickly, like maybe when you give them tools that they can use to work, to change, to improve their lives. Some people are able to action on this mm -hmm. much faster than others are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let me take you back to Clarity Counseling uh, Center. Mm -hmm. When did you find, like when was it founded? Mm -hmm. um, our center was founded in the year 2016. Back then, we were known as um, Counseling and Human Resource Solutions Limited. Mm -hmm. We changed that name in the year 2020 to Clarity Counseling mm -hmm. and Training Center. So we've been in existence now. This will be our, um, that's the seventh year. So this will be our seventh year now. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Mm. How many courses do you offer other than the self-awareness? Mm. Let me allow Violet to talk about we that. Have yeah, uh, <laughs> <market> <laughs> <now>. <laughs> we have uh, three areas mm -hmm. of uh, business. And that is uh, counseling, we have training, and we have consultancy. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to counseling, we have couples counseling, we have individual, we have uh, children and also adolescents. And when it comes to training, we have emotional intelligence, we have personal, we have character development. You know, there are so many, depending mm -hmm. with what an individual would really want to. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to consultancy, we have uh, corporate training. Yeah where we go to like banks, you know, and we train the whole staff that is there. And we also have uh, staff training, yeah. Um, probably as we come to an end of this interview, mm -hmm. hey, there are people, and I fall in that category, mm -hmm. who are afraid of counselors mm -hmm. because probably you had a bad experience mm -hmm. or you, you know Gopa now. Um, Will this person be able to keep what I tell them mm. to themselves? Mm -hmm. So what, what, 
what ha, what can you say about the credibility of counseling session, especially for those people mm -hmm. who've had bad experiences with mm -hmm. counselors before? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the bad, I, I get the, the reason why most people would be scared mm -hmm. because unfortunately um, in this country we have a lot of people calling themselves counsellors who are not trained counsellors, mm -hmm. probably because they, they did um, a unit uh, or two units when mm -hmm. they were doing a larger course, <laughs> then they imagine they are counsellors. And so it's about, um, I think uh, we, we, we need to educate the society about who to seek help from. Mm -hmm. Go to a professional counsellor. Mm -hmm. Ask them where, whether they are registered. Mm -hmm. Ask even to see if it's necessary their registration. Yeah, you have a right to. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. Yeah. Ask them their qualifications mm -hmm. as a counsellor. And it shouldn't be someone who has done a unit in counselling. Mm -hmm. It should be someone who's done counselling psychology. Mm -hmm. That's who a professional counsellor is. Someone who's done a course in counselling psychology because now that's the professional to help you. Yeah. Not any other profession uh, maybe where they have just done something in counselling. So I think mm -hmm. people need to be careful in terms of where they go to. It's just the same when you mm -hmm. go to, the, to a doctor's um, office a practice. Mm. You will see if it's a private practice, they hang their certificate somewhere on the wall. That's to show you the authenticity mm. of what they are doing. And so it's about people being vigilant as to where they are going to seek for help. Mm -hmm. mm. So um, I want to allow both of you to have a final remark. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll start with Violet. Mm -hmm. You use this camera. Okay, thank you so much, Grace, for having us here. Uh, just like I said, my name is Violet Ngina, and I'm a counselor and a marketer at Clarity Counseling and Training Center. I would like to urge uh, the women out there to stand out. You don't need to stay at home and stick to your stigma or trauma because of what happened to you during childhood. You need to stand out and live your life in full because maisha ni kuji enjoy. Najua raha jipatie mwenyewe. Don't stay at home and look at uh, yourself as, even if you're a housewife, you can still have fun with your children at home, understand who you are, Talk to us. Anytime you need to talk to someone, we are there to listen to you and give you hope because you are a queen, a princess, and you, uh, you can make it in life. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. uh, my message is basically to everybody outside there that mm -hmm. um, counseling is not uh, a scary thing. Counseling is vital to your life. Uh, it doesn't matter what profession you're in. It doesn't matter um, uh, what, at what stage of life you are in. If you want to understand yourself and grow into a better version of yourself, um, then counseling is a place for you. And you don't have to do counseling or you don't have to go through therapy sessions for you to grow as a person. Even training is an option for those people who feel like they are threatened by therapy. Um, and so invest in yourself. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. We really appreciate it. The final question mm -hmm. we usually love asking mm -hmm. anyone who comes here: mm -hmm. um, What are the three things you can't leave the house without, as a woman? Okay, for me, I cannot uh, even personal items. Yeah, I can name them. Actually, we're talking about personal ah, items. <laughs> I cannot leave my house without a TP, that is tissue paper, and I so I can also, also not leave the house without my Bible. I love the Bible. I read it frequently, and also I cannot leave the house without my phone. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, my phone, my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell there's a difference between me and Violet. She's more feminine than I am. I think my phone, uh, my phone, my wallet. What else? And probably some uh, face tissues. Mm. Uh, on the road, you're a cheetah or a tortoise? Um, I wouldn't say I'm a tortoise. I'm not. You're I'm a cheetah. I'm a go getter. It's a speed. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Twende. Yes. You're a cheetah or a tortoise? A cheetah, definitely. Allah. Mimi ni yao nyana shikilianga. Ro dere enda pole pole. Atu naraka kufika. Ukishikilia su tacho hapo. Au ndi wale uwa nasema uki achwa si achiki. Ah. Nini yao waku achwa si achiki. Au wa character development. But thank you so much for making time. Thank you. For sharing insights on counseling, you know. And um, the place of women in terms of counseling mm. and the place of young people. Mm. So we appreciate. Thank you for making time. Thank you. Asante sana. That was um, Jane Gasheru and Violet Ngina, uh, two phenomenal women who are counselors at, um, uh, let me just get it. Um, hmm, I need to say it correctly. 
at Clarity Counseling and Training Center. Mm -hmm. They have been sharing insights about um, counseling, the place of a woman in, in counseling, who mm -hmm. needs counseling, whether it's, it's uh, is it just because you have an issue that you need counseling, you know, and everything that matters counseling and self-awareness. Today's a strength of a woman is this tenacity and strength emotionally. That is the strength of a woman.